You know if Jurassic World Dominion's in the title, I gotta bring my boy Jeff onto the dang table. But do I replace him with Nigel the Shark? Or Devin the Demogorgon? Por que no los dos? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on another episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. We've got movie news to talk about today. I'm going to be showing you a new image from Jurassic World 3 entitled Jurassic World Dominion. Taking a look at the logo for the live action slash CGI hybrid of the Tom and Jerry movie. More details concerning Halloween kills from the co-writer of the movie. Leaving us to discuss when the Halloween kills trailer will be released. But not just that, so much more other movie news to discuss guys. So I need you guys to let me know down below your thoughts on all these topics we talk about also little jeffrey here is pleading you to hit that like button if you're enjoying this type of content we managed to hit our like goal for the recent child's play video i made and i'm gonna keep my promise of delivering you guys an update on the child's play tv series working on that video and it'll be released to you tomorrow but for right now let's jump into our first topic that we're going to discuss here beginning with a project that i think a lot of people are unexcited for heck i wouldn't blame you if you went ahead and skipped a couple seconds to the next topic but i happen to be a fan of the Green Hornet, all thanks to my father for showing me a little bit back in the day when the original series was on TV. Well, now a deal for a brand new Green Hornet franchise is confirmed and set to be hitting theaters in the near future. Not only that, but we're confirmed with the title of the movie. Instead of it just being named Green Hornet like the 2011 Seth Rogen version, this one will be entitled Green Hornet and Kato. Universal had this to say about the movie. Our goal is to make a film that existing fans will love and new fans will love to discover. With Universal, it feels like we are merging the past and the future, creating a contemporary version of the franchise that is fresh and exciting while respecting the long legacy and history I can't wait. Now, like I said, a lot of people just might not be fans of this either because they are too young to remember the Green Hornet from the television series back in the day that had Bruce Lee as one of the stars of the show. And the people who do know this franchise just know it as a slapstick dumb comedy thanks to Seth Rogen, who even though I enjoy that movie as a guilty pleasure, really did not do the material service. This one excites me because I feel like they're going to go ahead and take the dark, gritty, villainous approach to the Green Green Hornet character that was always meant to be done. If you don't know much about the Green Hornet, it revolves around this man, a billionaire who owns a newspaper industry, they'll definitely have to change that for this movie, and his driver Kato who works as his bodyguard, also his sidekick. The two decide to fight crime in their city, but the biggest twist is that they purposely brand themselves as the villains, letting the public believe that they are evil, menacing criminals, and up to no good, even though secretly they are trying to do do the right thing and defeat evil in their city. It's a really crazy premise and I still don't understand how they're gonna make it work, but I have to believe there's other people really excited for this thing. What do you guys think about the Green Hornet officially getting made? What do you think of the title and do you think they'll go with a dark and gritty tone? Are you just not interested? Jumping into a topic that I think will have Jeffrey really excited, Jurassic World 3 entitled Jurassic World Dominion was in the middle of shooting its movie before the whole pandemic happened and had everyone shutting down their production. That's not really going to stop the movie, and they still seem determined to meet their release date of June 11th, 2021. And the director, Colin Trevorrow, is obviously still very excited for this film because he went ahead and dropped another first look of this movie, giving us idea of a returning character and a setting that kind of makes me very excited. A couple things to grab here. One, the absolute excitement I have for seeing dinosaurs in the Jurassic World covered in snow, walking in snow. If we don't get a scene where a T-Rex or Velociraptors rip someone in half, cutting to them blood spewing on snow, I don't want this movie then. We better get that scene. As far as I can think, I haven't really seen that done in any of the Jurassic Park movies. So it'll be something refreshing to look at, seeing some of these dinosaurs who decided to inhabit a cold atmosphere. But then again, some speculate that the Ice Age killed the dinosaurs. So maybe people migrating to a winter atmosphere is the best way to avoid any dinosaur activity in your neighborhood. But I think the biggest takeaway is the person who is on the monitor, currently being filmed, that I believe confirms a plot leak that we had earlier in the year about what the Jurassic World Dominion was going to be about. The actress on the monitor is named Isabella Sermon and you might remember her as Macy. She was the little girl in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom who, spoilers, 
turned out to be a clone of the daughter who started this new Jurassic World Park. She's kind of a controversial figure right now in the Jurassic Park lore. Some people think it's really cool. Other people think it's just really ruining it and taking it away from the dinosaur aspect. I fall in the middle of it. I still haven't seen enough of what they're doing with this character. I kind of like the twist in the movie, but the direction they're going with in the third movie will really make or break this for a lot of people. Just as a refresher, the plot that leaked online from a Universal website in where they handle some of their marketing let leak the plot before it was quickly removed offline once fans noticed it read as when young macy is abducted by dino poachers owen and claire set out to find and rescue her with their journey taking them to a dinosaur habitat operated by global corporation with a possibly sinister agenda that's even now being investigated by alan and ellie you know what i dig that plot some people might not but i think this sounds really dope of course i would have wanted the movie to kind of focus on what it means for people and dinosaurs to live in one but we'll be following owen and claire setting out to rescue this clone girl when she gets abducted by this dino research obviously wanting to dissect her dna to create i guess more dinosaurs or human clones or dinosaur human hybrids also bumping into alan and ellie legacy characters in the jurassic park universe but i want to hear from you guys what do you think of the image of dinosaurs being in a snowy atmosphere and do you think this confirms the plot leak jumping out to an animated movie coming out in december of 2020 that i'm super hyped for the tom and jerry slash cgi hybrid movie i'm a huge tom and jerry fan okay this was my go-to whenever my parents would wake me up way too early for school and sabes que Tom and Jerry would be on TV and I would be staring at it instead of brushing my teeth and putting on my clothes so my mama could come in and spank me with her chancla. So I do have a personal attachment to this movie and we were just shown what the logo for the film looks like. Okay, maybe not all that glamorous and pretty obvious that this is something they were gonna go with, but the most interesting part to me is that it was just revealed by one of the animators working on this Tom and Jerry movie on what kind of animation style they were gonna be going with for this live action slash CGI hybrid. Instead of deciding to go the Sonic the Hedgehog movie route where they take an ultra realistic look at a head hedgehog or the character bringing him into our modern life tom and jerry can be expected to look 2d animated with a 3d effect to them i pulled up this old tom and jerry commercial to kind of give you an idea of what that means basically it's going to be roger rabbit animation just i guess a little more updated we've even had leaked storyboards from the movie that they once wanted jennifer lawrence to be part of this movie and it really gave us an idea of the animation style they want to go with for this film as much as i would have liked to have seen some sort of realistic take on Tom and Jerry I think nothing could have beaten the classic look of the characters to keep it highly animated the slapstick humor and that nostalgia and love of the characters I've had since I was a child what do you guys think about these details concerning Tom and Jerry are you fine with this animation would you have rather have gone with something more realistic bringing us to some horror movie news for the movie I'm still very much excited for this year don't get delayed now Michael Myers Halloween kills opening up this October in 2020 the excitement for this film just rolls on every day especially now with the co-writer of the movie saying a few more details about the film scott tim saying exactly i can't really say anything about it but i really am excited about it i saw a rough cut a few weeks ago and i'm a little biased but my gut says that people that like the last one will be very excited about this one it's like the first one on steroids i guess continuing on it really is the bigger badder meaner version of the first one this is just like when you have funky monkey text messages with your long distance girlfriend why you teasing but that brings me to the topic of the halloween kills trailer and when it will be released to the public because we have now hit that six month mark in the movie industry that's usually the time that people get a trailer for a big highly anticipated movie obviously circumstances have changed because of this whole rona situation and movies being delayed and people not able to go out to the theaters to enjoy this trailer in theaters and we did have jason blum the head of blumhouse studios tell us that the trailer is coming very soon and now pairing that up with states like georgia saying that they're going to be opening up movie theaters by next week that's going to lead to a trend of probably other movie theaters being open making studios more comfortable with releasing a trailer for a movie that hopefully won't be delayed since theaters will be open at that time so the two options for this halloween kills trailer when we're going to get it is either in the beginning of may on the stipulation that movie theaters are open and we have some sort of audience going out to the theater 
If not, the worst case scenario is that this trailer will be coming in July, three months away from the movie's release date, opening up alongside the fifth Purge movie, The Forever Purge. We all could just use some good news in our lives, so Michael Myers, please be coming to us sooner rather than later. But if we don't get the trailer for several months, it's just because things have not gotten better in the outside world and movie theaters is still closed. But that is just all the news we have to talk about today, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all the topics we discuss. Also, don't forget to leave a like on that video if you've made it this far. It helps out so much. As always, my name is Chris. Take care.